Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to step you back in the past. Every dot you see, Cherokee Nation burial mounds in some of the largest villages, cities, and the nations. Not to mention the 7,500 B.C. plethora of habitation quoted the richest archaeological area in the southeast U.S. Now it's all underwater. Convenient. Star forts is what I want to talk about as well. Fort Loudon, before they flooded the dam, they had to re-sculpt the entire riverbank. Oh, look how it looked like a star before that. Not to mention bulldozing all the archaeological sites, but stepping back into the 1950s, what do we see? Aerial photography, straight lines across riverbeds, and MR-23 is the ice house bottom, the 7,500-year-old site, completely underwater now. Wouldn't want to discover that. Look at it. Chote, the metropolis, one of the largest inhabited areas of the Cherokee Nations, Underwater again, what is with this? I think it's purposeful burying of history. I want to present my findings. Leave your comments in the description box below. Here we go on the deep dive. Because this is our history, human history. The last time we had a Democrat-led Congress and president was during the first years of the Obama administration. Janet Yellen was the Fed chair then, and now soon to be the new Treasury Secretary under Biden. Obamacare was passed, President Obama, and Congress sent billions to banks and Wall Street. That was the perfect recipe, and gold soared more than 200% from 2008 to 2011. We know Joe Biden is well-versed in the Obamanomics and raising taxes was the centerpiece of the campaign. History doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. Patriot Gold Group has the no-fee-for-life IRA where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold and silver. And you may be eligible for the no-fee-for-life IRA. So go ahead and give the folks at Patriot Gold Group a call to discuss physical gold and silver and the knowledge that Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs top rated gold IRA dealer five years in a row from 2016 until present. Click the link in the description box below for more information. And now on with the video. I'm gonna start you off here over East Tennessee, Cherokee Nations, prehistoric sites. Originally, every dot that you see here was a massive Cherokee Nation Habitation area, burial mounds, sacred areas, it's all underwater now. For an example, Chote, the metropolis discussed in 1765. Multi-thousands of people living in this area and size does matter. What do you see in the middle of the habitation triangles there? But the larger it was, the more meaning it had. Hence, burial mound is what you're looking at because of a place of reverence and the size of it meant the power it had in these different villages. I'm going to call them even cities because they were. Burial mounds is where we're going to go when you start to see these larger drawings on the maps as we go through the video. But here it is now, completely submerged, one of the greatest pieces of our historical past, underwater. And as I zoom in, those of you that understand the electric nature of the sculpting of our earth, why is it that these scallop patterns are right where one of the power symbols for the great Cherokee nations were? They resonated with the energies. They understood this energy was plasma geology, the elements in the rocks, underwater now. But let's step back into the past. 7,500 B.C., that would be about 9,500 years ago or so. The Little Tennessee River in the watershed. Substantial habitation. The site we're going to look at here, the Ice House Bottom Site and the Rose Island Site. Both of these would be absolute. You're arrested if you even pick up a grain of sand off of the place in today's modern world. But both of these sites within a mile of each other, eh, 1970s, put it underwater, didn't even matter. This is one of the excavation photos. And also what they'd found is 
the way these rocks were lined up in different areas, there were 13 different square stones lined up in a perfect line going toward the solstice. So again, Adam's calendar in Tennessee, something that old going back 9,500 years as a celestial calendar, bury it in the water. You know, we wouldn't let anybody see this now submerged. You can't even get a permit to go scuba diving to see these ruins and to see the mounds underwater. That's how protected it is now. But, oh, to build a dam over it so we can't look at it, oh, that's okay. They call it the Archaic Period, and these specific sites right now are the oldest known semi-permanent habitations, not only within Tennessee, but the southeast U.S. But they're all underwater. Why is that? Did they not know, the planners of the TVA and these different dams, that this would be off limits for any archaeologists? And Rose Island, yet another 6,000 B.C., what does that take, 8,000 years ago? Underwater. But I want to bring you over to the Star Forts because the Star Fort is in the exact same area as these two prehistoric sites, yet the largest Cherokee burial mounds as well. All within the same square mile of each other. A little bit strange, a little bit hard to believe that something wasn't being covered up here. Let's jump over. Tennessee Historical Quarterly, the archaeological dig up at Fort Loudoun really started in the 1950s, but we're looking here, 1970s, as the bulldozers had run around scraping everything. What they did catalog was a bunch of stuff from the 1700s, but what happened with the disconnect between the 6000 BC era up to 1700 and all they could find was something from 1700? Yeah, right. Those sites stretch from the Rose Island all the way down to Ice Bottom, completely through this area, square miles of habitation for thousands of thousands of years. Yet they could only find belt buckles from the 1700s. I don't think we're being given the true history of this area. So from the aerial view here, what they've done is they scraped the entire area of all the archaeological evidence, mounded it into this mound here, rebuilt a fake Fort Loudon above where the water line was going to be. And what I want to point you to is across the river. Because notice the very straight edges on this that, well, if you formed it out, would turn into a star. And notice the straight edge going back north toward the bridges. And when I talk about re-sculpting the landscape, I mean re-sculpting it. So when you're looking at the fort, which you can easily see with the white edges around it, everything at the bottom, which was the archaeological site, that's all bulldozer marks that they pushed land up. How much did they destroy? But when you look across the river, which had the straight edges, now it doesn't. Magic. But that's where they reconstructed the Teleco blockhouse. And what do I mean, Teleco Blockhouse? This is what you see today, and you're like, wow, look at the ruins there. They're right on the river's edge. That must have been such a great fort. Teleco Blockhouse, all to keep all the soldiers there. Cool. Wrong place. Let's look back into the 1950s aerial photo here, and I want to show you something interesting. Not only are there a lot of straight edges along this river, but if we look where the original Teleco Blockhouse was, check out those perfect straight edges. That does not occur in nature. And this is well before they sculpted any of the riverbank. And MR-23, that's the Ice House bottom site, 7500 BC site. So it would make sense if there was habitation in a prior civilization and society and star forts were part of that, that some of the oldest things you would ever find would be next to a star fort, which is right exactly what you're looking at. But across the river is a star fort. Wow, imagine that. Coincidental in history, I must say. I'm going to bring you here to the 1970s photos. Now you can see lower part of the image here. That is the Fort Loudon where they had already raised it so it wouldn't be submerged as they flooded everything. But look across the river. Circle there is, your guess is as good as mine. That's not the reconstruction for the Teleco blockhouse. That is something different that was there. And once you start to take a look at these edges, I put the first edge above that circle and I just took it straight down. I didn't even turn it, curve it or anything and look at the exact match on that. So if you were into engineering and you were going to try to create something that was in different multi-levels of a star fort, you need the exact same angle at different heights. 
That's what we're seeing here. And somehow it was given authority to come in and reconstruct the entire area. Coincidental, would you say? Because looking at today's Google Maps, you can see the Star Fort, Fort loud and reconstructed above the waterline. But when you look at the Teleco blockhouse directly across there, it's very difficult to hide that even though it's above the waterline. So I started to put a few lines in based on what I'd seen and known where the earlier river bottom was based on the star forts that we've seen across the planet. This seems to be a major, massive star fort because the Cherokee found it so sacred that they put two of their largest burial mounds in the same area. Some of the oldest habitation on our planet stretching three times further back than the Egyptians in the same area with two habitations within a single mile. I really am baffled at the sheer lack of understanding where they would flood all of this history in a single go. And stepping out into just putting a line wherever I saw a straight area. I know it doesn't exactly match the star for it, but re-sculpt the riverbank there through the last 40 years. And even if you come to the right past where those two uh, docks are in the bay there, going up the river, there's even more straight edges that make no sense, but they actually look like stars. When you start to see those flaring edges out, and I'll bring you into a close in here, but you know the Teleco Blockhouse, that square thing is not where originally it was. That was up on the hill, and I'd shown you those straight lines before. Something is very amiss here. Because coming into the Fort Loudness from the 1765 map, going right across the river, you know, you see those two gigantic representations of habitation. And remember, size does matter in these maps. Look at the rest of these from Tumultly, and you see the one giant earth mound there, and you go across the river, and those are noticeably larger than anything in Tuskegee as well. Noticeable and earth mound, sacred but now underwater. My local, that's where one of the largest burial mounds in the Cherokee nations are, underwater. I linked everything in the description box below so you can chase down every single coordinate, look up every single burial mound, look up all the history that's been erased from not yours, but their histories as well. All of our history. This is ridiculous how this was given a go-ahead to do such a thing. And to pull out these into a granular form, on the left side of the riverbank, or the west side, Rose Island, at least 6,000-year-old ruins. Ice Bottom House, MR-23, 7,500 B.C. ruins. Fort Loudon, that star fort right in the middle and across the way, bordering on what looks like a deconstructed star fort, the Patrick ruins. Now, you're telling me that all this is in the same exact area here. And it was all flooded. This is one of the greatest archaeological finds in human history, and it's been flooded. All underwater, no need to see it. Maybe there's something more here that was happening that would give keys to our past. Because we know how the Vatican hides treasures, the Smithsonian... National Geographic only allow you the narrative that you're supposed to see and know. This map, everywhere you see an arrow, is an underwater site that would shed light on our previous history. But this is looking the other direction, back into the mountains from the same ice house site. Fort Loudon would be just off to the bottom of the screen there, but as far as you can see would have been habitation, Villages, trading posts, cities, burial mounds, sacred sites of the Cherokee Nation. All submerged. All of it. So how large was this burial mound in Tamotli? Something larger than this. Apparently it's about 45 to 47 feet where it needs a hazard marker in the middle of the water area because it's so large and it actually sticks above. That's how large it was. Another burial mound underwater here, Tokwa. You can't even swim out there. This is several miles across. And up to Sitiko. Massive habitation there as well. And what do you see square in the center? Obviously another burial mound of large, large size. Bring it to today. 
You could see where it was, but now it's completely submerged. Almost looks like an estuary coming out of something in Louisiana going down the Gulf Coast. You have to realize the riverbeds were very different. They did flood during every single flood season, but the way it's flooded now, it's permanently flooded and all of our history has been erased. So looking over at Tansai, what do you see of the great Cherokee Nation? Chote. I'll bring you back to where I started in the beginning here because those are in the same areas. Obviously, giant burial mounds there, one of the largest areas. They call it the Metropolis. Timberlake called it the Metropolis in 1765. That's how many people were there. As you came out of the mountains from the North Carolina side, you came into these massive trading areas. Unicoi Highway was another one. But what I found so interesting here, what's that other star fort on the other side? I looked for it in vain. History books, libraries, Google Earth, because I'm a fan of this stuff and I really want to visit these areas because I think there's something energetic in this spot. I did talk to a couple of historians and they said it was burned and that was it and it disappeared from history. But we'll never know exactly, but I will bring you to the north and west of the Chota site where it shows the fort was. Do you notice that strange canal that's been dug in there? That's not natural at all, but that's exactly where that fort sits, or used to sit. Destroyed in the 1750s, but I guess that's a conversation for another day. Underwater still, nonetheless, off limits for everybody. And look at the massive amount of destruction of all these archaeological sites, from the Cherokee Nations to the Star Forts. And it does seem flooding, whether natural or man-made, covers all remnants of history. This lithograph here from either rising sea levels or sinking earth from the Ottoman Dominions, 1860s as well. I do thank you for watching. So much of our history has been erased and I try to uncover parts of it. You can join me over at Patreon forward slash adapt 2030. At the same time, I'm trying to find these cycles in history as we move to the future how fast and what's being hidden because the cycles of history were known by the ancients and that's what's being hidden from us. I think it all interconnects somehow, but thanks for watching. See you next time. Links are below for everything I talked about tonight as well as the link to Patreon. And if you like this type of information with all the demonetization going on across the social media and that, join me there, support my work, and I'll see you next time.